gonna put about two tablespoons of batter on here after brushing. All right, let's see how it looks. Now I'm going to whisk into uh, whipped cream, one pint. I'm gonna add a couple tablespoons of powdered sugar and uh, about a teaspoon of vanilla. I'm starting the cake and what I'm going to do is sift two and a half cups of cake flour along with uh, two teaspoons of baking powder, half teaspoon of baking soda, and a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna sift that into a uh, bowl. Now I'm going to whisk together three quarters of a cup of butter and one and three quarters cup of sugar. The final two ingredients uh, besides the flour mixture is one half cup of milk, which I've warmed to room temperature, and the half cup of reduced puree. So what we're gonna do is whisk in the flour mixture until it's barely incorporated. Then I'm gonna add the milk and the puree. I've greased and floured two nine inch cake pans. I've preheated the oven to 350 and we're going to now bake these for about 24 minutes. It's time now to start the polenta. And drizzle some olive oil over 10 cloves of garlic. I've preheated the oven to 375 degrees. And wrap this up tight and bake it for about 15 minutes, 5-0. All right, it's boiling, so we're gonna turn it down to medium and put in three cups of polenta. And we're gonna cook it about 10 minutes, stirring frequently. All right, the polenta is uh, done. So now I'm going to mix in two tablespoons of fresh lemon juice, two tablespoons of fresh thyme, and uh, yeah, about one cup of Parmesan cheese, and some salt. Now I'm going to spread it about two inches deep I've taken the roast garlic out of the oven and let it cool a bit. Now we're going to mash it down into a paste for the aioli tomorrow with a quarter of a teaspoon of salt. I'm going to start cooking the quinoa now and I have four tablespoons of olive oil heating over medium heat. Before I do that, uh, let me mention a couple things I did off camera. I put uh, sour cream for the egg mini muffins in this pastry bottle. For the blinis, I've chopped up smoked salmon. I've mixed together heavy cream and chocolate for the cake. I've chopped chives in uh, quarter inch segments for the egg mini muffins. And I've chopped chives for the quinoa onion bits. And while I'm cooking the quinoa, I'm going to go ahead and chop up the onions. I've got four cups of quinoa and I've uh, Wash these for three minutes to get some of the bitterness out of it. And I'm going to go ahead and fry this in the oil. I'm going to fry the quinoa for about three minutes. And then I'm going to add five cups of chicken broth. And we're going to cover it and let it simmer for about 30 minutes. The quinoa is cool now. So I'm going to go ahead and chill that overnight in the refrigerator. I went ahead and sliced in half the uh, prosciutto for the uh, melon brochettes. The last task of the day is for the melon brochettes also. And we're going to mince up some basil, shallots, uh, in olive oil in the food processor. That's good. So I'll be starting early tomorrow morning at uh, around 6.30 or 7 and it should be a short but uh, intense day.
it's the day of the brunch and we're going to make the cake first and we're, what we're going to do is start by creaming the butter and I've softened this up uh, for the last uh, hour or so we're going to add to this now the strawberry puree and the powdered sugar This seems a little thinner than I thought. Ash, this is so thin. This is just gonna run down the sides. All right, now I'm going to microwave the chocolate and cream that we saved yesterday. We're going to microwave this for one minute. And after that one minute, then we'll go in 30 second increments. Oh, 
Okay, the, uh, the cake has been in the refrigerator and it's actually come out much nicer than I thought it would. I'm just kidding. This is the one that Karen, my neighbor, made. And this is how mine turned out. I actually think they look pretty similar. <laughs> Marilyn and her guests loved the party. The fruit Prosecco brunch punch was a huge hit. Not too sweet or overpowering, it tasted great with the food and packed a bit of a punch, no pun intended. Garden vegetables are a staple at parties, but what set these apart was the homemade ranch dip. It's so easy to make and so satisfying. I don't think I'll ever go back to store-bought ranch. The brochettes of melon, prosciutto, and fresh mozzarella were a perfect starter course. Those melons were so sweet and the combination was perfect for whetting the appetite. I was surprised and delighted by the quinoa onion bites. Ordinarily, I could take or leave quinoa, but those bites were outstanding. In fact, Marilyn surveyed the guests and the quinoa numbered among the top three favorites, but the buckwheat blinis with smoked salmon and creme fraiche tied for the top spot. Those blinis were wonderful. I particularly liked the salmon roe, which offset the flavor and sweetness of the blinis and creme fraiche. The roasted red pepper shots were tasty, healthy, and a bit of a novelty. I enjoyed them, though they were a bit viscous for shots. Ah, the churro waffle bites with strawberries and whipped cream. As I could have predicted, these were the other top choice, along with the blinis. So delicious. Our guests devoured the shrimp lollipops and roasted red pepper pesto with gusto, and for good reason. The combination of flavors was rich, complex, and utterly enjoyable. I thought the baked polenta fries with garlic aioli were flavorful, but a bit dry, though the moist and tasty aioli helped. And the polenta fries stacked like Jenga pieces, which made for a unique presentation. The bacon and cheddar egg mini muffins were the simplest of the cooked dishes, and a couple guests chose them as their favorite. They were tasty and filling, like tiny omelets. Of course, the dessert was the biggest challenge. I believe the strawberry cake with strawberry buttercream and chocolate ganache was the ugliest thing I've ever made in a kitchen. That's a shame because it was delicious, rich and moist, and definitely worth trying. In my defense, I did have the foresight to ask my talented neighbor, Karen Gray Garrido, to bake a second cake. She chose a chocolate cake with white chocolate mousse and cocoa jelly topping. It was so good and looked like a work of art. Maybe I can persuade Karen to teach me how she does it. After this experience, I have to tip my hat to people who cater parties for a living. There's so much work. There's no way I could have done it without Lucy, Brent, and Todd. I thank them for all their help. The party was a huge hit, even the cakes. So happy. I hope you liked this episode. Leave a comment below if the mood strikes you, and like and subscribe. Goodbye. <laughs>